Hello everyone. In today's video, let's check out Obsidian Sync. It is a paid add-on to sync notes between vaults on various devices. It features end-to-end -end encryption. I will just explain what that is shortly. It integrates version history, which allows you to save versions of your notes once every 10 seconds. Version histories are kept for up to one year before it's cleaned up. Again, it's important to note that this is only for notes and not attachments. You can have up to five remote walls with each sync account. And each of these remote walls has a capacity of up to four gigabytes of data, including version history. Now, let's understand what end-to-end -end encryption exactly is. End-to-end -end encryption is a method of secure communication that prevents third parties from accessing data while it's transferred from one end system or device to another. When we set up end-to-end -end encryption, your files will be locked and transferred to Obsidian using either a password set by you or automatically managed by Obsidian. I will show this option in preferences later. When you want to access this data using another device or machine, you will need to decrypt this data by providing the same password which you or Obsidian had set earlier. What this means is that the data will be encrypted on one end and decrypted on the other, thus enabling end-to-end -end encryption. Let's look at how we can set up selective sync. First, you click Settings, then Core Plugins, and turn on the toggle for Sync. Next, click on Sync. Where it says Pick Remote Vault, select the Choose option. Since we don't have a remote vault created yet, we'll configure it by first selecting the vault name. Let's call this test vault. Now this is where you can select if you want to set your own password or let Obsidian manage the encryption key for you. Please note however, this cannot be changed later. It is currently toggled on and therefore requires a password but for the sake of this video, I will turn it off and let Obsidian manage it for me. Now I will click create vault and as you can see Obsidian has successfully created the test vault for us. Now we click connect and set up the connection between our test vault and our local vault. Now you have a large selection of options. Let me walk you through each one of them. The first option is pick remote vault, which we just did. If you wanted to sync the local vault to any other remote vault, you do it from here as well. Second is sync status. You can pause the sync from here if you wish to. This option allows you to view and restore deleted files. Here you can view the sync activity or the log. Let me click view. Now here you can manage which folders to exclude. I don't want HTML to sync, so I'll just uncheck it. Now over here you can toggle which type of files you want to sync. You can see images turned on, but audio, video and PDF is toggled off. Another great feature is that sync is almost instantaneous. You can actually appreciate this feature when you're using Obsidian Mobile and Desktop together. And that is a quick look at sync. I had earlier prepared a video in which I went through an alternative method of setting up sync which gives more control on the encryption and can be free, but would take away a lot of features like version history and instantaneous syncing. Click the eye icon on the top right to see it. If you found this video helpful, then please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. If you have any feedback, suggestions or questions, then please leave those in the comment section below or send me a direct message via Twitter. I have a new video on my Obsidian setup using some interesting plugins coming out soon, so please stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.